Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's February 16th. These are your headlines. First up, we're hearing about more and bigger stripers coming out of the Housatonic River this week. We're also hearing about an uptick in salmon and trout activity over in Rhode Island and up in Massachusetts, out in the western part of the state, still pulling some big pike through the ice out there. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So before we begin, just got a couple of news items for you. The first one is more of a reminder, and that is that if you live in Rhode Island and you like to freshwater fish, you're going to need to renew your license at the end of this month. All 2022 licenses end on February 28th, so make sure you renew your license this week or next week. I'll remind you again next week. Another thing to keep in mind if you're a freshwater guy from Rhode Island is that any trout stock waters will also close after the 28th. And they'll be closed until opening day, which is the first Saturday in April. So make sure you don't make that mistake. I actually made that mistake once many years ago. And while I didn't get a ticket, I did get a stern warning. And uh, <laughs> the guy was none too pleased. So that's one thing. The other thing is Black Hall Outfitters is going to have another uh, seminar this weekend that's going to be at their Westbrook location. It's going to be from 1 to 2 p.m. It'll be followed by a question and answer session. And this is with Ryan Nye, who's a kayaking cha champion. Uh, he's also a, the pro, a pro staff member of Old Town Kayaks. And he just won a big tournament down in Florida. Um, uh, ten of the top ten anglers in kayak fishing all converged on this one lake down in Florida, and he won the whole thing. So he's going to give you a whole rundown on kayak fishing strategies for largemouth bass and a whole bunch of other stuff that he's going to pass along. So you definitely want to check that out again. That's at the Westbrook location, and that's this Saturday, the 18th, from 1 to 2 p.m. It's going to be food and drink, raffles, all kinds of stuff there, and it's open, free to the public. So definitely want to go and check that out. Last thing, of course, is the giveaway. Finally got the workshop up and running. That's why I'm down here in the in the cave part of my house here, just kind of putting some stuff together to to work on. And uh, one of those things is going to be the lure that we're going to be giving away. So um, hopefully next week I'll have that thing all buttoned up and I can give you a look at it. Uh, it's going to be a jointed GT, which is an old school Gibbs lure that they don't make anymore, but it used to be like a big secret on the back beaches of the Cape. So uh, we'll get you one of those, and uh, you guys know the drill by now, but just in case uh, you need a refresher course, really simple. It's got to be a recently caught fish. It's got to show you with your fish. can't be your sneaker or something like that. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's freshwater, saltwater, or if you caught it on vacation. you just got to email it to me at danderson at thefisherman.com with contest or giveaway in the subject line, or if you'd prefer, you can text it to me at the number on the screen. And at the end of the at the end of the period here, end of the giveaway period, I will pick a winner, and then I'll probably start another one up after that. Before we get into the Massachusetts portion of the report, we're going to go north of the border a little bit. Um, there's still a lot of ice fishing going on uh, in New Hampshire and Maine. You've got to travel pretty far north. You've got to go at least an hour past the border. Uh, to start finding some safe ice. And some of the bigger lakes are either open or it's just a couple coves that are safe. I know Winnipesaukee is not safe, no bueno. Uh, and you're definitely going to need to be careful. If you head up there, you're going to want to bring your spud and just kind of feel your way out so you don't get yourself into the danger zone. Um, but they are catching a lot of fish up there. They're catching everything from cusk and lake trout to smallmouth bass to pike and pickerel. There's a lot of different things being taken through the ice up there. So if you're a hardcore ice angler and you're starting to feel like Maybe it's not going to happen this year. You might be right, unless you're willing to jump in the car and uh, drive to the north. That's one of the options you've got. So um, that's definitely something that's worth checking out if ice fishing is your thing. Jumping back over now into Massachusetts, uh, we're going to start things off with Mr. James Jukes up there on the North Shore. Well, this doesn't feel like February, does it? I got birds chirping in the background. The sun is shining. 40 degrees out here. Um, haven't found any ice locally here uh, it's all open water uh, but the fishing has been good plenty of guys getting all different species uh, the carp bites been on fire uh, guys are seeing some pike and smallies uh, on the river uh, if you want to go up farther north I know a few guys are hitting some really nice fish uh, through the ice, 
but they're about an hour and a half, two hours north of here. So uh, just be careful if you do find ice. Um, the holdover striped bass this week seems like guys have been uh, getting on them. Nothing giant. I uh, heard a couple of 20, 24 inches in this area. Or I should say a little closer to the coast in here. But, uh, yeah, guys have been finding them. Uh, I'm sure guys that are in and around Boston or south of getting a little better action. Um, but that's really about it. It's all good. Get out on the water. So as you can see, there's a lot going on up there. You got the carp fishing in the Merrimack River. They got some holdover fishing going on in there and some of the other uh, local spots out there. I have not heard anything from Boston, but I'd have to guess that up inside the Charles River and whatnot, some of those holdover spots, they are finding some fish. Um, but I have not heard that report. But, you know, with the weather being the way it's been, they've got to be active. Um, as we get down closer to the Cape, there's two things that are starting to really materialize. Uh, one of them is the largemouth bass bite seems to be firing up. Um, and to me that's really exciting because usually it's around the 1st of March when we expect to see that sort of uptick in largemouth activity. But we're, you know, a full two weeks early here at this point. And so that tells me that we're probably going to have a, we're going to have an earlier move into like that pre-spawn fishing, which is some of my favorite largemouth fishing of the year. Uh, usually starts off slow with some finesse fishing, which is what's happening right now. Guys are getting on Ned rigs and Demiki rigs and uh, blade baits and things of that nature. Also definitely getting them on suspending jerk baits. Just going to want to fish the smaller ones right now. But usually it's a pretty rapid uh, ascension into, you know, a more aggressive bite and a time when you can start to fish some bigger baits. Um, so really by the end of this month, I would say uh, as long as we don't get some crazy punch in the face from Old Man Winter, um, we should be in that mode we're usually in in mid-March, and that to me is very exciting. So that's one thing you're definitely going to want to keep an eye on if you're a freshwater guy. Another thing is that the pickerel spawn will start to come together. Again, this is usually early to mid-March, but I have a feeling it's going to be early this year. Um, what I do for that, I fish the northern end of some shallower lakes, find some green weeds, and just throw big jerk baits, um, and especially if they're in louder colors like chartreuse or bright orange or something like that. Um, the, the shallow green vegetation seems to be a key of that, and the north end of the lakes always get a lot of sun, um, and you can usually find some shallow flats. So what I do is I throw like the KVDs, which are a cheaper jerk bait, but they still get the job done beautifully. It doesn't matter if they break off or if they get chewed up because they don't cost 25 bucks like a mega bass. Um, but this is a great time of year to get some really big pickerel, and in my opinion, pickerel are grossly underappreciated. They are an amazing fish, they fight pretty well, and they can grow to some amazing sizes. Not too many people target them, so that's another thing you guys can check out. Last thing for the open water fishing in Massachusetts is the trout fishing, which we've been talking about for feels like ever at this point. Um, but we're in that time when things are going to start to transition for trout too. So right now, most guys are getting them on bait and most of them are just dead sticking like a nightcrawler inflated on the bottom or something like that. But as the water continues to warm back up again, we're going to see a switch over to more and more lure fishing and get them on jerk baits and get them on tins and get them on soft plastics. Um, so, you know, I'm expecting to, as long, again, as long as we don't get slapped in the face by old man winter, we should be well on our way to an early start to the freshwater fishing in the spring out on the Cape and throughout the rest of New England. Uh, for a wrap-up on what's going on in Massachusetts, let's head inland now and talk to Roy Leva, who's still walking on safe ice out in the Berkshires. Uh, ice survived. Uh, at least in some places it has. Uh, there's a lot of places that I fished last year. Actually, a place that I um, came to from last week when I was on the ice, uh, that has, that's no longer safe. So. Uh, today I'm out here, I'm in a t-shirt, it's warm as all can be, uh, weather's got to be at least like close to 60 degrees, uh, a lot of water on the ice, um, but the fishing has been fairly great, uh, a lot of trout, bass, pickerel, uh, all the panfish, bullheads, pike, you name it, the fishing's been really, really good, uh, most of my fishing's been jigging, uh, I've been running a 122nd ounce uh, Castmaster spoon, and then tipping it with you know a wax worm or a meal worm, uh, keeping it really simple, letting it drop to the bottom, raising it up a couple cranks, 
and then just uh, working them. Sometimes they want it slow, sometimes they don't want it to move at all, and then sometimes they want it to move really, really fast. Uh, fish actually let you know, you just gotta go through all the motions. But that's been good, this morning's been great. A lot of bass, a lot of pickerel, uh, a few brown trout, small brown trout, uh, and a lot of bruiser sized perch. So I'll keep you guys posted next week. Uh, be safe, you head out, you know, make sure that, that you're, you're taking all precautions because even though there's 15 inches on this lake, this next warm spell with all that rain, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna survive. Catch you guys later. And actually, I got one more thing to say about Massachusetts, and that is um, there's been some big pike in some of those way out west lakes. It doesn't sound like they're smashing them. You know, I think Oneota is one where they're getting some fish. Uh, sounds like they're putting in long days, but I did get a picture again from Dan Southwick of a nice pike that he got this week. Um, you know, again, I always call him the most prolific freshwater fisherman in New England, and uh, he seems to be proving that over and over again. But um, that bite is still going on, and it's something that you ice hardcore guys can take advantage of if you don't mind taking a drive. Over Rhode Island, yeah, that's this has probably been the leanest week of the entire winter in Rhode Island. Um, doesn't seem like, for some strange reason, any of the headboats are running out to coxes. I'm sure that there are still codfish out there, but the hard part right now is going to be finding a boat to take you there. Um, we have gotten zero reports from any of the boats that run out of Point Judith or anywhere nearby on anything going on out there. So the only thing I can tell you is that it's probably still happening, but for some reason these boats aren't running. Um, there was a slight increase in holdover bass activity this week in some of the salt ponds and tributaries that run into Narragansett Bay, but it still sounds like it's quite a grind. Uh, guys are putting in a lot of time for a few fish. The good news is, is that a lot of the herring runs over an island see if some early fish, um, you know, right around the end of February typically. So if you keep your eyes on the runs and you start seeing a few fish in the runs, that's a good time to put your time back into some holdover bass fishing. Uh, that can really fire things up in a hurry. Once they get that high calorie, uh, big bait moving around, they tend to wake up quick. So that's definitely something that you're going to want to keep an eye on. On the freshwater side of things, we're hearing about great rainbow trout and Sebago salmon fishing. That's been going on for a while, but it seems like it got even a little bit better this week. The salmon guys are getting all their fish on lures, although I bet you some have gotten them on uh, shiners. I just haven't heard that. Um, but again, faster moving stuff seems to be getting it done. Um, guys are trolling like small swimming baits, like a uh, like a Rapala or something like that. Guys are getting them just throwing light jig heads on a, on a um, paddle tail or a Ron Z or something like that and just fishing them kind of quickly. Those fish seem to be very aggressive and they've stayed that way throughout the entire winter. So that's, um, that's one thing you can do. If you'd rather just take the, you know, take the calmer route and fish for rainbows, um, you can kind of go old school and fly fish for them. They've been hitting those and this, some salmon are coming on uh, streamers as well. Or you can you know, dead stick a rod, throw some power bait out there or a night crawler, um, and you're gonna, you're probably gonna find some fish. Uh, they seem to have done a really good job stocking. A lot of fish have been put in. A lot of guys are catching fish, um, and the only thing that we're not finding right now are those lake trout. I don't know if DEM only put like 10 lake trout in, or if they're just much harder to catch than any of us would have guessed. But um, still, have not seen the first lake trout. Can't wait till I actually see one. Uh, but that's really the complete rundown of what's going on in Rhode Island this week. Moving over into Connecticut, um, something that I talked about in the Massachusetts portion of the report should be said here as well. I don't have any largemouth bass reports from Connecticut this week, but I can just about guarantee you that um, that, that same thing that's been happening out, in, um, out on the Cape is happening in Connecticut as well especially in the southern portions of the state. Um, those fish are just going to start to wake up a little bit more. It's, the water is much warmer than it typically is for mid-February, and these fish are waking up. So that's definitely something that you guys can put some focus on. The other thing, of course, is trout fishing, which has been great really all season. And um, one of the places that's been popping them out like crazy all winter long is the Farmington River. Uh, got some text messages from uh, Derek Kirkpatrick from Connecticut Fish Guides. He sent me this video of him catching a really nice brown trout. He said he had five brown trout over 18 inches from the Farmington in less than an hour and a half the other day. So the, the river's fishing very well. Um, and while we're on the subject of the Farmington and Derek, we're going to toss it over to him now and get a report. I'm coming to you from the Farmington River today. 
Uh, this mild winter trend is continuing. The tip of the week this week is to not neglect the small entomology. So as we progress here, you're going to start to notice midges and early stones, both small and larger size. The smaller ones being anywhere from a 20 to an 18 and some of the larger ones size 14. Last week we talked about fishing till dark. Your bigger stones will be active in the latter part of the day, last light and first light. And then early morning to late morning, you'll still have Hendrickson's in the drift if you have a good sun spike. So indicator nymphing and tight lining will work. The fish are not going to be just in the heads of the pools. Don't neglect water types too. You're going to find that fish are potted up in certain areas and that's due to the types of bugs that they're they're currently eating so anyone that's headed out definitely observe do some sanding see what you see and don't neglect the small stuff the other place that's seeing a lot of activity uh, especially angler activity is the um, connecticut river we've got some guys fishing for pike they're floating shiners under under bobbers out there some of them throwing big jerk baits from shore and they're starting to see a little bit more activity out there now. Um, also in the coves, you've got lots of opportunity to catch white perch, yellow perch, calico bass, maybe some largemouth bass. There's lots of pickerel up in there. Uh, so you got a real mixed bag going on inside the Connecticut River. None of the coves are frozen over. Uh, so it's got to be either you got to sneak in somewhere and do it from shore or you got to hop in a boat and make it happen that way. But um, it's definitely one of the best fisheries we have in southern New England. It's definitely something you guys should be checking out if you're Jones into Bend to Rod. Uh, for a little bit more on the Connecticut River and some of the surrounding areas, let's toss it over now to Roman Leibel. Hey, everybody. Excuse the background noise. I'm uh, pretty close to the highway here. I just got off the water with a client this morning. Had some fairly decent fishing for a wild brown trout on a small stream. Uh, it took him a little while to get into the swing of things, but eventually got about a half dozen fish to hand. Beautiful wild fish, mix of uh, nymphing and uh, dry dropper. Uh, it is pretty much like spring this week. I would get out uh, Friday and Saturday if you can. Those will be the, the real good days weather-wise. Um, there will be a bit of wind, but holdover stripers should uh, perk up with the rain and the warm temperatures, especially in the Housatonic. Uh, the lower Connecticut River tribs have been really tricky this year. There aren't as many fish as there are some winners. Uh, but get after it, uh, they should perk up. So what few fish are around will be more active at least. And there might be some larger ones than some years. Uh, the trout fishing is really good. Expect to see midges emerging and winter stonefly egg laying events. Uh, there's been some trout rising most days, a good amount of surface activity more fish on the surface rising actively than you'll see even sometimes in the spring. So get after it while the weather's good because uh, I suspect March isn't going to be quite as nice as February has been so far. Uh, good luck out there everyone. As far as I know all the ice in the northwest corner of the state is now not safe anymore so that is knocked out. Um, but one thing that's kind of ramped up to take its place is the Housatonic River. We're starting to see a lot, uh, well not a lot, but we're starting to see more bigger striped bass showing up now. I saw quite a few photos online this week of some bigger fish uh, that were taken over the last seven to 10 days and just seeing an uptick in activity. Those fish are starting to feel that change and um, you know they too may be starting to see, maybe they're starting to see their first herring scouts. I don't know the timing of the herring on the hoosie, but um, even if it hasn't happened yet, something is making those fish wake up a little bit more. We got some rain coming in toward the end of the week here and into the weekend, so there's a really good chance that the Housatonic is going to put out more fish this week. Um, I would toss it over now to uh, Max, but he's under the weather again this week, so I'm just going to wrap up the report by saying that the trout fishing out in the western part of the state is still going strong. You can get them in the Mill River, you can get them in the Saugatuck, um, you can get them any of those TMAs out in the western part of the state. Um, the trout fishing has been excellent out there, and um, I mean, really, Connecticut just does a wonderful job every year. The winter fishing in Connecticut is always great. And um, this year, with milder temperatures, it just seems to be even better. So that's the story that I have for you guys in Connecticut this week. 
And to wrap things up, we'll take a short flight now down to uh, Marina Pez Vela in Costa Rica and uh, get a little report on what's going down down there in paradise. Hey there guys, this is Ben Gilmore checking in from Costa Rica and the Marina Pez Vela. The offshore bite right now has been really good. We've got plenty of sailfish out there, mainly 30 to 40 miles out at the moment, the sailfish bite. We've got blue marlin. The blue marlin bite's been good. Sun trips, we're seeing one to three blue marlin, which has been nice. And there's been some real big black marlin over our offshore reefs. Quite a few fish caught over 500 pounds in the last week or two. Inshore, we've had some snook and snapper close to the river mouths and some really nice rooster fishing going on as well at the rocks. I've had a couple of roosters close to 45, 50 pound over the last week or two. Guys, we'd love to see you down here in Costa Rica. This is Ben Gilmore handing back to you, Jackpot's Ball Fishing. And that's the story that I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hope you're gonna find them useful. You know, the temperatures, it's just, it's, this isn't winter. This doesn't feel like February. And it does look like we might get a little dip toward the end of the month, but that's in the long range forecast, which will change 19 times before we get there. So it's anyone's guess, but um, you know, I'm really hoping just from a personal standpoint that we just kind of coast through the rest of February and get into March, which is one of my favorite months to fish fresh water in New England. I'm really excited about going for some largemouth bass, about doing some of that pickerel fishing, and I'm um, hoping that you guys are feeling the same way. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend heading over to the website. That's thefisherman.com. You'll get a full gamut of what we cover. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. That's everything from Delaware all the way up to Maine. And it's all the t different types of fishing that happen in that region, whether it's saltwater, freshwater, boat, offshore, paddleboard, travel, it's all there. Uh, we got you covered. And uh, so definitely check that out. And if you're still not convinced, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.